starting. Okay, so uh, today I um, I sort of loaded up the app and before the stream started, and I was looking through what had been doing last time to try to remember, and uh, we had been trying to get it working on Heroku. And we were getting this really weird error message whenever we tried to migrate the database because we eventually figured out that that was the problem. And uh, after some Googling, I discovered that uh, uh, when you're running, um, when you're running commands like Heroku PG PSQL, uh, it doesn't really connect in and use the PG or PSQL that's that's on Heroku, um, and I think I can show this. So, what is it? Heroku uh, PG SQL PG SQL. I think that's right. Nope. That yeah, PSQL. Yes. Um. And so it tells me, hey, you need the local PSQL command to even do this at all. And so that that's a really fascinating um, uh, a thing that I hadn't really thought of before is uh, they're, they don't like SSH in and run it remotely for you. You require to have it installed locally, which I don't right now. Now I can I can actually get this uh, get this installed and running, but uh, I wanted to maybe uh, work on the testing today. So we got the testing working in a more sort of manual way, where I could uh, reset the database and reset an environment variable, and then use that. Also, that's the neighbor's dog barking. Um, okay, so um, that's that's where that's where we stand with what happened last week. So this week, let's just move on to the Docker side of things. So I do believe I have Docker. Yeah, I do have Docker installed. Uh, and I have PHP. I think there is a Docker. Is there a Docker Laravel? There's no official Docker Laravel. And I know that there's a, a what is it? There, there's a, um, Cypress. Oh, interesting. So there's no official Cypress. So I'd have to make sure that this is the user Cypress. I, I think like their documentation mentioned that they do have a, a, uh, a Docker image here that we can use. Um, so the idea is that we need a Postgres database. We need a Cypress image. And well, I guess like first we need to get the app up and running inside of Docker. And once we get it running inside of Docker, then we can load up Cypress and have it, um, have it connect. We'll then have it run. Yeah. That, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. So we could use Docker Compose to run a bunch of different Docker containers together at the same time. I'm actually a big fan of Docker Compose, and I know that uh, some of the tools have replaced it recently, but it's really easy for setting up uh, for setting up multiple images, uh, multiple containers, but not necessarily having to scale them. That would be something more like for Kubernetes. So with that being said, also I want to make sure, yeah, that's all running fine. With that being said, uh, where do I want to start? Probably, 
uh, I probably want to start with getting Laravel installed and set up. So I'm curious if there is a, in the Laravel documentation, do they talk about a Docker, a Docker image? Ha. Huh. Well, okay, so there's just queues, but that's it. But nothing about, like, so there's no official Docker container for Laravel. That's kind of what I figured. So we'll, we'll probably have to install. I'm, um, I'm more paranoid when it comes to running, like, strangers' uh, Docker containers. And I think that comes from... Uh, Docker runs as root in even even if uh, the way I set it up where I've added myself to the group so that way I could just run the Docker commands outside of um, outside of using sudo that doesn't mean that Docker's not running as root it's it still is which means that if anything was in there and broke out of the container then it would have complete root access to the the system. So that's why I generally don't uh, don't run like strange, unknown, unofficial Docker containers or Docker images. I know I keep on like mixing up the terminology. So let's get Laravel installed. I guess we'll just use a PHP. Um, you know that'd be really interesting. Is there a homestead? Docker search homestead. No, there's there's no official homestead Docker uh, either. Uh, all right, well let's just use the latest PHP. Docker search PHP. Looks like there's two PHPs. There's a Zend server, which I don't really care about, and just normal PHP. So I'm gonna start there. So uh, Docker run, uh, it's gonna be the PHP. For this test, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna remove it, which means that as soon as I exit out of it, it's just gonna delete the container. Uh, the idea for this is I'm really just gonna be exploring exploring this and, and trying to figure out what do I need to do to get Laravel installed inside of here. So I don't need a name. I do need a to connect to dash I and T. Uh, so interactive and the TTY. What else do I need to uh, add in here for this. I don't really care about forwarding ports right now. I'm not going to be running a server. I just want to to install uh, Laravel and, and see what the, the steps are for that. So I guess now it's just PHP. The, the latest is probably fine and uh, we're going to override with bin bash. Oh, I... I guess I did install it earlier. So um, now that we have this PHP-V, so we have 7.3.6 is what we have. Uh, do we have Composer? No, we don't. Okay, so we need PHP greater than 713, BCM math PHP extension. So we need all of these too. Uh, we'll find out if we don't have them pretty quickly, I bet. There of all, okay, so we have to install Composer first.
Okay, so this this can be used to install Composer normally, and then there's a automatic. Okay, so we get the signature. We copy the installer. We hash the installer. And then we compare the signature to the installer. And if it's an invalid, we delete the setup, the installer. Otherwise, we set it up using the quiet flag. We remove the installer and then we exit. I think this runs it into the local directory. This doesn't seem too bad. We, we can run this. Ooh, that was not what I wanted to do. Try that again. All right, so we have our Composer installer. We can run it. This is just in Roots. This is probably a terrible place to run it. Let's um, uh, if I go into Home, there's nothing here. Uh, maybe maybe if we create a directory. Usually I create a directory something like code. I, gu I guess I could do that here. Uh, then we're gonna move composer installer to, that's not what I wanted. Move co to Okay, so here's our Composer installer. Let's just try running uh, Composer installer now. Right, wget not found. So that's the first thing we're gonna have to do. Uh, we should probably begin creating a Docker file for this. Uh, and I think we could just put it in here. Docker extension, sure. Install that for me. And I always forget, and they've they've changed it. Is there a? It'd be nice if they had like a a sort of like set up a base one based upon the latest documentation. But I think I'm gonna have to go and look it up. So Docker file. Don't you have, oh, I'm used to this. No? Where's the actual list of all the commands? Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna move it to the other window. So, unfor I'll, I'll show what I can see here. Uh, there's, I, I like to just use this on the side as a, um, as, I don't know, as a uh, sort of like a list of the commands that I can put in. So I would start, for example, with from, and then, then I can just go through all of these. 
But when I make this small, they get rid of this side thing and clicking on that, it just never shows up at all, which is really sad. So I'm gonna put it over in the other, other window. And so we're gonna start with from. And it has been a little while since I created one of these. So from base image, we could just use PHP. What what PHP image is available? I mean, latest should probably be fine, right? If it's not, we can come in and change it. Then we're gonna have our, our runs. Now, the order of this is both important and not important depending upon what commands we're running. Uh, so for example, with run here, the first thing we want to do is install this wget that we're about to do here. So what is this? Um, we're gonna be apt update and so we'll let that run. So it's gonna be apt, uh, all right, it's gonna be apt get update and apt get install. And uh, here we're gonna put in W get, I think. All right. Uh, sudo, oh no, no sudo. apt get install w get. Oh, and I probably want to put a dash y in this, just in case. Just to have it auto say yes. Okay, so there's wget. Okay, so we have a composer.far now. No interaction. So that means we need to now copy this composer uh, install script over and then run that. But we need to make sure this actually ran uh, properly. So Where's the running it? Okay, so run the installer. Now run php composer.far in order to run composer. So, oh, okay. So that's all, that's all I need to do. I can just leave this here for right now and not really care about it. So that means I need to get that script back again. So copy you. Here's what I'm thinking. We can have a scripts folder, which doesn't exist right now. So 
So let's we'll go into scripts and we'll um, cat into, or I guess I'll just touch install composer dot uh, sh. We'll, we'll copy this in, save it, and uh, make it make it executable. So now we need to copy this installer in. Now, at one point in time, I remembered the difference between add and copy and I completely forget now. So the add instruction copies new files, directories, or remote file URLs from a source and adds them to the file system of the image at the path. And copy, copies new files or directories and adds them to the file system of the container at the path. Uh, Katali, hello. So I don't remember. I, I could probably go look it up. Um, I'm not going to worry about it right now, especially, especially when doing this on the internet, I'll be just told, uh, by a lot of people, um, Hey, don't use, don't use ad for this. Use copy or don't use copy for this. Use ad. Um, it would, it'd be nice if it like said in the documentation, just right, right in the example. So I'll show you what I'm looking at. We, we want to use add or copy. I don't know which one I want to use. It's going to be something like this. We're going to add a file. because it, it copies new files, directories, or more URLs. And this is one thing I have a problem with the documentation for Docker. If you go down to copy, it has almost the exact same uh, uh, wording here for what it's gonna do. And I'm sure if I read all of this, I might figure out exactly what I want to use. Uh, I guess the directory itself is not copied, just the contents. And with add, I mean, same thing, but there's some more rules for it. All right, I'm just gonna add, um, I'm just gonna use add. All right, so after, after we do this run and install the things that we need to run, let's now add in. So it's gonna be an add. Our source is gonna be this scripts folder. Uh, this can sound weird, but what's the point of Docker? Um, so are you familiar with like Homestead or, or Vagrant or, or some of the, or like VMs in general? Um, Docker is, it's not a full virtual machine. It's a, a container system and it uses the container system that, uh, Linux and Unix has had since like, I don't know, the eighties or so, except that it was extremely unfriendly to use. And it's not a true VM as in it, it doesn't have its own, um, piece of memory, piece of hard drive, uh, and the CPU sort of like cordoned off just for it. Uh, so instead what it does is it shares 
like the piece of the kernel that I have that is uh, compatible with whatever is inside the container, that's shared. Uh, the memory is shared. The hard drive is, is shared in a very you know, specific place. All that means uh, that Docker is really, really, really fast, but also allows me the flexibility of installing other operating systems into my computer without screwing up my own paths and, and files and everything else. So I can like delete them, recreate them, and verify that I'm running the exact same uh, environment that I am on the server. So that, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to recreate how my testing is gonna work on uh, Travis CI. And it's really fun, it's really great for testing, like playing around and learning like different things. And you're like, oh, I screwed that up, let's just re refigure that out. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of like, that's the Docker thing. There's a lot of people who also use Docker in production. Uh, and that's a completely different conversation because then we start talking about, uh, how you can es essentially create elastic, uh, Amazon elastic beanstalk yourself. Um, or like your own version of Heroku. Uh, there, there's some crazy things you can do with Docker. I'm not doing those. The video is a little bit out of sync. That's not good. Also, I'm not sure how to fix that without like restarting the video, without restarting the stream, which I don't want to do. No drop frames. Hmm. Is it just the, like the audio or, or the video? Or I guess that's what you mean. The audio and the video are out of sync, aren't they? I don't know, I could try switching to like, I don't know if that's really gonna help at all. Or if it's gonna need like a reboot or something. I don't know, well, let's try this. So I'm gonna add the scripts uh, the scripts folder. Specifically, I want to add the scripts slash install composer.sh to uh, just like scripts. And we can run this anytime and sort of like play with it and see, see how it's wor working. Uh, we might as well do that right now. So I have this sort of inside here. I can exit out. Oh, and then, well, I guess, yeah, let's, let's just do this. We'll exit out of there. We'll come back to my code. So here's this Docker file. I can now do docker build uh, dash T for, I think, like the label. What am I, I'm get, I, did, I guess I'm doing Laravel in here. Um, we'll put the latest tag on it and we'll say the Docker file is right here. Uh, so let's see, was this an actual delaying package configuration since apt utils is not installed? It doesn't look like that was a real error. It successfully built and tagged this. So if I now do a Docker images, uh, we now see that we have Brickzerker Laravel tag latest and when it was created. So now I can run this. So Docker run. I'm going to do the exact same thing with a dash dash RM because we're going to be constantly rebuilding this and 
the only real difference here is now I'm going to be running. Oh, here's this ad. So it, it claimed it added it. Didn't didn't fail. Uh, what is this? Circer slash. Ah, tab autocomplete would be nice here. Um, Laravel. And if I leave off everything else, it'll automatically use the latest tag. So here we are. Uh, we can now go into scripts. Scripts is not a directory. Oh, well, that's a problem. Okay, so it copied it to here. So I actually want this to be scripts slash install composer dot sh. We'll try this again. As we go through this, this should become a little bit faster because it does cache uh, some of these installs. So for example, it cached the install of wget. And as long as that version doesn't change too much, it should be fine. And now I can uh, come into here. We'll cd into scripts. And here's the install composer. So we're going to run install composer. And now that composer.far is there. So that's the next thing we want to do. So after we've added, then we're going to run and the command, oh, we want to CD into that file, but there's an actual, I think it's work directory. Yeah, it sets the working directory for all those other commands. So. Work directory slash scripts, and then we're going to run. Why are you upset? Why did you stop? I'm a little bit sad that it stopped the autocomplete. All right, well, whatever. Um, okay, so we're going to now run this install composer. So that should now create that, that command and we'll verify that. And we're still in scripts because that's where the uh, work directory was. Here's this composer.far, and if I need to use PHP, composer.far, it worked just fine. So now we're, we're back to here. So composer is installed. Now we need to download Laravel using composer. So composer global require Then we're gonna to have to update the path. Actually, don't know if we're gonna to need to update the path for that. We can probably just use the the full the full path here. Um, all right. So, what would this be? It's gonna be PHP composer dot far Oop. and then it's going to be global require so this is the command we're going to run now the other choice is that we can run Laravel just wherever we want
Do not run composer as root or super user. I mean, it's doing it anyways. Um, this is a really good point. We, we generally don't want to run these things as root because if they do break out, they're, I mean, there's a much better chance that they could break out. Installation request for Laravel installer. Requires ext zip. The requested PHP extension zip is missing from your system. Okay, I probably don't have ext.zip. So I probably need to apt. Do I have tab autocomplete? No, I don't. Okay. Um, apt search. I don't think that's what I want, though. It'd be nice if there was a package called exactly that, although there might be, and it's just not available on, on whatever version of Ubuntu this is, which sucks a little bit. You know what I could do? Right, let's come here. Let's go to, what is it? Hub.docker.com. I'm gonna search for Laravel. So there's no Laravel official. I don't think there's any official ones, but what I can do is go to the Docker file and take a look at what they're doing. And actually, you know what? Do I really need a full Laravel? Like, I, I'm trying to think, like, I, I guess I, I would need it. But if I just have, if I just have Composer and I have the entire application do I do I really need the global Laravel I don't actually know if I need it let okay let's try let's try something something fun so you know we have all these scripts for installing composer and I need this entire I need everything here I wonder if I can just do add dot so we're gonna add everything that we have. And we're gonna put it into slash. We're gonna put it into code. Just probably code is, oh. Oh, is that the problem where it doesn't want to, is that the difference between add and copy? Uh, 
I want everything in the local directory. If source is a directory, the entire contents of the directory are copied, including file system metadata. And for add, Oh, well, no, it's the exact same thing. I mean, there's other stuff in there, but I don't really know what those are. So I'm just going to add everything to slash code. And it should be in there. Um, Kim slash, hello, welcome to this uh, stream. Kim, you work with Docker a lot. Maybe, maybe you can tell me if I should be using add or copy. I'm just trying to copy all the code uh, over in, in. So the work directory is now going to be slash code. Uh, actually, probably code slash scripts. And then we're going to run installer install composer. Uh, and then we're going to work dir slash code again. So back to back to code here. And I, I think that's what I'm just going to do right now. All right, so we'll try this again. This add code is, t that took a long time. Okay, successfully built. Let's run this again. So here's all the, here's all the files. I didn't, um, I'm not like connected to my local directory. So these are just actual copies. I could also, um, for example, run PHP scripts composer.far and and that's working add or copy would work for this okay i i vaguely remember a long time ago someone was telling me that one is better for some reasons and the other is better for other reasons but docker tip to the difference between copy and add and a doc okay I'll, I'll take a look at that later uh, let's see. So once I have this, then we're going to run PHP composer oh, scripts composer.far install. Oh, actually, you know what? I may not need to install it looks like it's already set up so because it because it just installed everything over here my node modules and my vendor folder were copied over too so therefore i don't really need them i don't really need to run the uh the composer install command again because they're they're here. I wonder if I can just run PHP artisan serve then. Artisan so that works. All right, so Laravel development server uh, started on eight thousand. Let's uh Let's see if um, if I can run this here. So dashboard. 
I can never remember if it's like my port first and then the remote port next. I guess I'm just gonna do, well, let's, let's try this. We'll do 3000 to 8000. And then we're gonna CD, I guess, PHP scripts composer.far, no, PHP artisan serve. Site cannot be reached. Did I do it backwards? Um, Oh, and I, I don't know. I don't know if I need to uh, to set up the the port system here. Uh, that would be a nice thing to do, though. We can try. We can try the other other way around. So exit out of here. Eight thousand to three thousand. The only reason I don't do eight thousand right now is because I think that's what uh, that's what um, Homestead is using right now, and that's active. Well, I, I guess the easiest thing I could do then is just turn off turn off uh, Homestead. Ah, I'm not gonna worry about that right this second. We'll try eight thousand, three thousand. Address already in use. Okay, so 8,000 is local. That That's what it is. This is local, this is remote. So here we're saying, okay, I want the local 3,000 to be bound to 8,000 so that if I connect to it, it will then, it'll then show up and, and, and work for us. You know, this might be the other problem here. 127.001.8000 might actually not be where we want it to go. I might want it to go to 000. Um, zero. Because I, I vaguely remember that that is, that is a routing thing that we need in, in Unix so that it routes properly outside. Uh, what is... Oh, and I can set the port here. Okay. Okay, so I can do dash dash host equals zero dot zero. Um, and port is 8,000, that's fine. So there is that, back to you. Hit refresh and now, now it's working. Okay, so if that's all we're really like worrying about right this second, uh, getting, getting our application working locally is, is pretty simple. Now we need a lot more, right? Because we need a database and connect it and and connecting that up too. And that will get it to like fully work. So and then we can another container for or what is it? Another container for the uh, Cypress testing. So work directory code. And then just sort of setting, send up to serve it. Um, uh, 
in the documentation here. I don't want to set this up as an executable. I don't want to use run because this, oh, maybe it's command. The defaults for executing a container. Okay, so I think command is what we want to do. Um, oh, and it needs to be this sort of style. So the executable, uh, this is going to be uh, PHP. So we're going to do PHP artisan uh, serve. And then we're going to have these parameters. So what was it? Dash dash host uh, zero. Oh, PHP host equals zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. I think I think that will be good enough. Oh, we also need to set the port. So let's do that up here. Oh, it's exposed. That's what it is. So we're going to expose. Uh, let's expose port 3000 because we know that 8000 is, um, is sort of like busy as it is. And so we'll save this. Re exit out of here. And rebuild. The, uh, the container. So the name now is a little bit wrong. I should probably rename this instead of uh, Brookzerker Laravel. I should probably name it Brookzerker um, like the actual project name or, or something like that. Because Laravel is not installed at all. It's just the artifacts of Laravel, the artifacts of the uh, the, the full um, command and everything. So now we want to run this. So we can run this in, in daemon mode, as it were. So we can do docker run. So we can give it a name. I think it's name space. Some of these are equals and some of them are spaces. So the name we're going to just like project idea holder. We want to, let's say we don't want to connect to, to it manually. We just want to run it. So we don't need the dash I or T. Uh, we don't need to set up a network or, or anything else like that. Eventually we will in order to connect the database to it. We don't want it to be deleted automatically. We do need a port system. So we can do port uh, 3000 to 8000. I think I'm actually wrong on this one. I want this to be exposed port 8,000, 8,000 from the inside. Um, next time I rebuild this, I'll just get that. These are all overrides anyways. And then we'll run this. So, Berserker, Laravel, and then I'm not gonna put anything else in here. It should just run now. Ooh, PHP artisan serve, not found. Where was I? I was in slash code.
Well, apparently that failed. So let's, um, nope, that's. Oh, name is already in use. Uh, let's docker, if I do a ps-a, we'll see them all. We'll just create this again. Um, oh. Why didn't you drop me in it? Oh, right, because the IT. I need to remove you again. In fact, we can dash IT. All right, so here we're inside of it. PHP artisan serve PHP artisan serve not found. Did I misspell it? Nope, it's spelled exactly the same. I'm in the proper work directory. Did I just run command wrong? Oh, I'm supposed to do it this style. It's like, tell it where PHP is. If you would like your container to run the same executable every time, then you should consider using ng-point in combination with CMD. Oh, if the user specifies arguments to Docker run, they will override the default specified in, in CMD. I'm not, I don't have a problem with overriding it. Well, I guess we can try sort of this style with every little thing being so which PHP okay so we're gonna do PHP then artisan then serve then dash dash host equals this. Uh, and I have no idea if this needs to be in quotes. I'll just put them in single quotes here. And maybe this will be better. Let's rebuild it and find out. Exit, we need to do another. That's not what I wanted to run. Luckily I don't have an OAuth demo server here. Uh, it was uh, Docker remove. Okay, we'll do a Docker build again. I should still change the name, I forgot to do it again. I'm glad it's not caching the ad, because that would be really annoying if it tried to do that. Okay, so built that, then we have a Docker run. Uh, we're now we're gonna, let's do this again. Uh, see if it, see if it's gonna just run here. And I also want dash D for daemon mode. 
I'm gonna do Docker PS. So it's up and running. Um, we can see that it's got these ports set up. If I come back to here, it should just run. There we go. So it's working now. So that, that command, I had it wrong, uh, but I fixed it. And that means that now we have a Docker, a Docker file set up for the project itself. Um, I mean, this is super simple. It doesn't really need to be anything special. We probably will need to set up some environment variables for this. I'm, I'm not too terribly worried about that right this second. Right now, it, it does, um, it did copy over this ENV. I'm probably gonna want to then copy over like the test into the ENV. And then, um, then we'll probably have different images based upon which, which ENVs were copied over. That might, that might be good. I don't know if I want to get anything crazy like have. Oh, there's there's a couple different ways we can go about this. We can have one Docker file that does them both, or we can have multiple Docker files, each one for like a test or a development. You know, it almost doesn't matter. If we start with a brand new database, it, well, when I need Docker Compose to run the tests over and over again, it needs to reset the database each time. That's, that's the fun command. I can figure that one out later. All right, but what we have here is we have, we run this, we create the image, we run it, and bam, my, my application is running inside of a container. It's not running very well because if I tried to do anything uh, like the actual creating of the account, it won't work because there's no database. So we need to add that in next. So let's actually go to Docker Hub. So there is an official package for Docker Hub, and official packages with Docker really mean that either the Docker team built this or the, uh, the Postgres team built it and Docker verified that it really was them. And it's just called Postgres. I'm okay with using the latest right now. If we run into problems, we can tie it to a very specific version. I don't actually know what version Heroku gave me. Um, so, Tying it to that version would, would be the best. What I wanna do is I want to install this, get a network, get a Docker network, put them both together, put an environment variable in the, put an environment variable in the version for the Laravel application that points, that tells it where the Docker uh, where the database is. Thanks. DJ Design, welcome to the stream. Oh, like a hashtag Docker? Um, well, this is also the first stream I've used Docker on in a long time. 
I'll have to check to see if uh, Twitch has the Docker, the Docker tag. Um, but thanks for stopping by. Okay, so they are created an entry point with init DB. I guess we, we're eventually gonna use Docker Compose for this. Oh right, and before I before I start doing this, I do want to switch over to another user. I almost forgot I want to do that. So in here, everything here is run as root. So we're eventually going to want to switch over and use a non-root user. And I always I always forget what the command is. Um, let's do Docker, I think it's Docker stop, project idea holder. They were gonna remove it. It's actually um, rerun this uh, manually in here. I want to look up user add. Oh, of course, of course not. Uh, user add dash h. Okay, so the base directory so the home directory of the new account. I'll probably make that the code directory. Oh, interesting. I forget the difference between the base directory and the home directory itself. Like, is this one directory up from the home directory? And do I need to create that directory myself? Okay, create the user's home directory. So I could actually have it create the user's home directory and then do the add in. Maybe, I don't, I don't actually know if I want to do that. Or if I don't want to create a home directory at all, and then just give them access to the code directory. I think maybe I'm gonna try not. Let's 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 figure this out. So in here we're gonna we're gonna run these. Let's also run the other thing we need to run as root, which is uh, the make directory. So was it user add? And I, I can never remember, does, does Docker give me another user add, like a better, a better user add? No. 
No, this just sets a user that already exists. Oh wait, on Windows, the user must be created first if it's not a built-in account. Does that mean that Linux, you don't need to do that? It's very interesting that they call out Windows very specifically for that. I, in all my previous ones, I was creating user ad myself. And if I'm, if I was wrong and I didn't need to do that the entire time, that's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Um, so I'm just going to name this uh, like project, project user. Yeah, I want to do that just in case there's there's something else there. I don't know if the user is going to be allowed to add all this code in. I kind of feel that creating this directory and then changing the owner to project user and then maybe adding it in. I don't know. It, it would be nice. I could also do this down. down here. Again, this ad may make it so that it's the wrong user. We can try it, see what happens. My guess is we're gonna get uh, a user not created, like a user doesn't exist error. Okay, so we need to stop. Okay, just remove that first. We need a Docker build command. Instead of calling this Laravel, we'll just call this um, Laravel project. Okay, so yeah, the documentation is a little bit misleading by specifically calling out uh, Windows on that uh, and not Linux. We do need to add the, the project user ourselves. So let's, let's see how I want to do this. We're going to run user add. Um, Oh, so it's just going to be slash home. I could set everything else to be slash home or, or we could just not really care about this. I can basically not create a home directory for it. So dash capital M. I think that's that. And then the, the login name. So this is going to be project user. 
We're then gonna add in to code into there. We're gonna switch over to project user. I'm probably going to need to shown this, but I have no idea if I'm going to need to do that. So let's try this. Invalid installer signature. Uh, also permission denied. So permission denied because uh, my user wasn't allowed to use that. I wonder if I if I do set it up and I, I allow it to have a home directory. Uh, what what's the default? You know what I want to do? Let's let's do this. Docker run dash, dash rm uh, dash it. Let's go into PHP slash bin bash. So I'm really curious if I do user add. So if I just do user add and this, I give it a, a basic like um, project user, what happens? Let's let's first start by going to home directory. So it, it didn't create the the home directory for this. If I then switch over to uh, switch user to project user, I can, but I probably can't do anything. So if I try to like make your, actually, where am I? Oh, I'm in slash home. So literally slash home is the home directory now. That's interesting. I don't know if I like that. So then if I copy things into slash home as the user, that will probably be the best way to do it. I wanna exit this, exit. Let's do this one more, nope, not that, this. Let's do another user add. And this time we're gonna say create the user's home directory. Oh, is the base directory slash or, I don't know, but let's, okay. I'm just kind of like experimenting to see what it is. This is one of the best uses of containers, by the way, is just sort of like to play with this and not screw up my own computer. So we're gonna do user add dash M for make the home directory. And we're gonna just call this test user. Uh, CD to home. It created the test user home directory in here. So if I now su into test user, um, oh, we're in slash slash home. And test user is there. So that's not exactly what I wanted it to do. So let's try this again. Uh, user add, uh, we want to set the base directory to slash home and we want to set the home directory to slash home test user. Uh, we're gonna make it and then call it test user. So here's test user. If I cd into test user, there's nothing else in there. We su to test user. 
and now we're in home test user. So this is the command we want to run. User add, the, the base is home. Apparently it was, I guess, slash or... We also need this dash directory to tell it where the directory is going to be and then to make it. Okay, so this gives us our, our user they want to do. I'm really curious if I run this first, we then not not this user, we're gonna call this project user. We switch over to project user. We then add this. Let's add it to the home directory. So slash home, actually, so we want to go to slash uh, home slash project user. We're going to switch over into each of these places. We're going to run the installer. We're going to go back to home project user. We're going to expose this and run it. Let's try it. This is going to be the last one to do because we're, I'm running out of time. So this will this will be a last run, success or not, because I'm gonna have to go get ready and head to work. Invalid install signature cannot remove composer setup.php, no such file or directory. Interesting. Oh, permission denied. Oh, interesting. Okay, so copy composer setup PHP failed. Where did it fail to copy that? So we added this in, we switched to scripts. We ran install composer.sh and then we had this error. So all of the debug this another time. I don't know if I'm going to debug it on stream uh, next time on Wednesday, or if I'm going to debug it off stream, probably knowing my history, I'll probably debug it next time on stream. Um, my schedule has been on um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays in the morning before I head off to work. So that's 6.45 a.m. mountain time to 8.15 a.m. Uh, mountain time and uh, and then obviously I head off to work. I don't really have any other uh, scheduled streams. Sometimes I'll, I'll stream after work. Um, that sort of depends upon how things are going. Uh, when I do stream, I'll tweet those out or if you want to get notified, go ahead and uh, and follow me here. And I'm archiving all these up to YouTube so that people, people can see it. Uh, I think with that, I'm going to head off and get ready for work. Um, thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Also, thank you. Uh, I'll, we'll see you next time, Katali. And let's switch over to the ending screen. And uh, have a great rest of your day. <laughs>